These are my previous solar panels manufactured by Loom Solar. But this time I chose Bluebird Solar. Both are manufactured by Monoperk technology, but surprisingly, Bluebird Solar panels came with MC4 connectors attached, but Loom Solar didn't. This framework needs to be rebuilt to accommodate these new boys into the system. Let's do some cutting and welding to make the framework lengthier so that we can place the newly bought solar panels with existing ones. Now I have a total of 200 watt solar panel array fixed on a frame. This frame can be tilted on one axis so that I can adjust the solar panel according to the seasonal changes to the positions of the sun in the sky. I made the frame this way so that I can later install a single axis solar tracking system that tracks the sun's daily east-west movements. It's not worth installing a tracking system these days because modern solar panels are highly efficient. But I just wanted to show you how a tracking system works. Let's check the open circuit voltage and short circuit current of the individual solar panels. I'm getting 22.8 volt VOC and 1.78 amps ISC from a single Bluebird solar panel I recently bought. Since we are building a 12 volt system using a PWN charge controller, we have to connect all the four panels in parallel so that we will get a VOC of 22 volt and a combined ISC of around 8 amps. We have 4-in-1 T4 MC4 branch connectors to easily and effortlessly connect 4 similar panels in PAL. You can buy this from my Amazon store. Connect all the positive leads to one branch connector and all the negatives to the other. Now we have a common positive and negative output leads to which I'm going to connect the wire using a pair of MC4. You can easily calculate the DC wire gauge using any of online wire gauge calculators. Let's check the VOC and ISC of a solar array we just connected together. Adjust the multimeter to read 10 ampere range and then connect the testing leads to the solar panel output. When we are connecting an ammeter to a solar panel, we are actually short circuiting the panel. This means the maximum current will flow through the circuit. Here we get an ISC of 8 amps. Adjust the multimeter to read VOC of a solar panel. When we connect the voltmeter to a solar panel, we are actually connecting it in PAL, so the circuit is open. Then we'll get the maximum voltage the solar panel can supply in a given solar radiation. Here we get a VOC of 22 volt. The next step is designing the control panel. We have to connect the charge controller, a DC MCB for the solar panel, another DC MCB for the battery, an AC isolator to disconnect the inverter from the AC control box. This is a 20 amps PWM charge controller I'm going to use with this system. Charge controllers are used to protect the battery from getting overcharged or over discharged. It also prevents the reverse flow of charge from the battery to the solar panel. This charge controller has six connectors on the bottom side. Two of them are for solar panels, another two for battery, and last two for connecting DC load. This is the 800 watt sine wave inverter I'm going to use with this system. As you can see, there are two input leads that we have to connect to the positive and negative terminals of the battery. And there are input, output, and neutral connectors. Since we are building an off-grid solar power system, we don't need this input connector. These are the phase and neutral of the inverter output. This 110 AH battery is going to store the solar energy and power of the inverter. This is a lead acid tubular battery which usually has a depth of discharge of around 50%. Let's connect the inverter and the charge controller's battery leads to the positive and negative terminals of the battery. Here we can see an AC isolator which is used to isolate the AC control panel from the inverter. Make sure the inverter is turned off and connect the output phase and neutral to the AC isolator. Now we can connect the solar panel output to the first MCB. Make sure you are connecting positive and negative leads from the panel to the same on the charge control. You should pay attention when connecting the battery too. Interchanging the polarity will damage the charge control. I suggest you use different colored wires for positive and negative polarity so that you will not get confused. Great! Sun is shining bright on the solar panels which has already started producing power but the MCB blocks the power to reach the charge controller and then the battery. Just to turn on the first MCB and check how much voltage the solar panel array is generating. Great, look at that, 21.6 volt. Now let's turn on the second MCB between the battery and the charge controller. Keep this in mind, 
When turning on an off-grid solar power system, always turn on the battery first. It will help the charge controller to identify the battery and its voltage. The battery is a new one that's why it already read 12.5 volt. Then you can turn on the solar panel. If you turn on the battery while the solar panel is connected, the charge controller will malfunction. You can see that the battery voltage is rising which means the solar array has started charging the battery. Now let's turn on the inverter and AC isolator and test the AC loads using this control box. Perfect! Our 800 watts off-grid solar power system is ready to harness unlimited solar energy and power your office, workshop or outhouse. Enjoy! If you have any suggestions or doubts regarding this project, please let me know in the comment section. And if you want to know how do I say my solar panels, the charge controller, battery or inverter, I will return a detailed article on my website newphysicist.com. Please check it out. Link is in the description.